phone ringing. We're going to be talking with our second guest tonight, Mr. Dr. Chris Jacob Bolkman. Got a fight Bolkman. coming up. Hey, good evening, Jacob. This is Big Perm with Uncensored MMA. How are you? Pretty good. Good, man. I uh, Glad to have you back on the show again tonight and sit here and uh, shoot shit with you about your fight coming up. Are you ready? Sounds good. All right, man. Well, before we get rolling, I wanted to bring in my co-host. I got with me Dave the Butcher Clifford. And Dave, are you there, bud? Absolutely, man. It's a pleasure to have you back on the show again. I'm uh, ready to see you back in action. It's good to see you uh, signed up with World Series of Fighting. And uh I'd like to hear about what that's like to kick it off. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, uh, tell us about we your now? opponent. Yeah, yeah we're, we're live, live right now. now. Oh, we're all live right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it, it's, so, pretty, it's pretty it's pretty nice. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were, you had like inter- or I thought you had a commercials first. No, we're ready to talk. We do this shit live. It's a train wreck. Your your interview is brought to us by PatinoDiet.com. dot com. Sounds good. There's your commercial. All right. Hell yes. So tell us and about this you fight you got coming up here. What's that? What was that? What's that? Wait a minute. What? What did you say, homie? I said also sponsored what? by Volkman Chiropractic. Oh, for chiropractic. That is exactly correct. <laughs> the, the, dynamic, oh, yes. the dynamic Jacob Volkman, man. It is a pleasure to be talking to you again. <laughs> so what was your right. question before I... No, it's all good. I was just... Uh, you're fighting Lyle Beerbomb coming up June 14th. It's the World Series of Fighting 3. I just uh, wanted to get your thoughts on that upcoming fight, and uh, I'm just glad to see that you're uh, working, man. I love to watch you fight, and I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, same here. Um, the only thing I'm worried about with Lyle Beerbaum is I hope he's not on methamphetamine when he's uh, when he's out there. Cause I was talking right. to a guy that was working at a hospital, a security guard, yeah. stocky guy, looks like he's on steroids. He said it takes about four of him to control somebody that's on meth. I hope I don't, I don't run into that. Yeah, I yeah, no doubt, that. man. I mean, uh... He got a joke around about that, even though it is part of his past. He probably doesn't want to think right. about it. But it is his past, and he has to live with it. It's yeah, his, yeah, long it's not his present, right? I never deny right. anything when people ask ask me about things I've done. I say, yes, sir, and I learn from it. What you got next? You know, yep. but you're right. That you don't want to fight somebody on that shit. You're right. Man, that's crazy. But uh, so <laughs> fancy pants beer bomb. You know, this guy wants to make a name for himself. He's got a little bit of a following here and there. I plan yep. on dismantling that and putting that to, to, you know, leaving him in a pile of rubble. Yeah, yeah, well, the the, the main goal is to get the guy on the ground because my strength is going to be, we're kind of similar strengths, but I, I'm pretty sure my strength is a lot stronger than his strength, the ground game. So that, that's the main goal here. Well, with you, I mean, you know, yeah, I'm still here. But I would say, Jacob, you know, you, you're a three-time Division One All-American, so, I mean, so you, you're definitely uh, your your ground game is going to match it. It's going to be superior, man. Um, and I, I really think that uh, if you stick with that game plan, that'll win you the fight, dude. Totally. Yeah, yeah. And that's the goal. I don't want to sit and bang with a guy because you never know. A lucky punch changed the whole the, the tide of the game. Yeah, just like that, in the blink of an eye. Yeah. So you, you, you know, know with, if uh, if you do that. What are you guys doing? Sorry, bro. I'm sorry, well, I just man. wanted I to ask over you. my homeboy here. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you about the process, the, the courting process, you know, when you were uh, entertaining the idea of signing with uh, the, the World Series of Fighting. Um, you know, what do they like to work with? Um, How did the process go? And, I mean, obviously you signed with them, so it was, you know, you're happy to be back to work making a paycheck. Um just just tell us about the process and the organization as a whole and how you feel about them. Well, I actually got the number from Joe Silva. He, he was nice enough to actually give me the number for World Series because I heard they were starting up and they were looking for fighters. Uh, really? I called uh Yeah, I called Ali up. He signed me right away. He was he was pretty stoked about signing me right away. Um, other than that, it, it it's a lot. It's not as organized as the UFC. Obviously, it's not going to be. They're still they're starting up. They still got some kinks to gotta straighten out, but they're they're doing a good job so far. Hopefully they don't have enough don't have another problem where it comes down to the last minute to get their cage approved. 
hopefully they can fix that problem. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, for sure. like the last that one, one they the ass. Yeah, two hours before the fight, they were wondering if the cage was going to get approved for the the commission was going to approve it. I was like, Jesus. Wow. Well, and, you well, know, David, I'm, I'm sure to hear, you know, some, some, you know, we're going to get a good, honest answer out of somebody. You know, I wonder how those things affect. I mean, obviously, you're going there to do your job, and they're going to pay yeah. you well to do your job because you're one of the top competitors in, around. I mean, you're a great fighter. So. With that being said, when you start, you know, obviously since you just mentioned it, when you when you go in there with just a shad of doubt or a little bit of a, you know, wondering for what's going to happen, how much does that affect you when you go in there to fight now? Uh, I don't think it's going to affect me at all, to be honest. The only thing that worried me was if this organization is going to last. I don't want it to happen just like the AXC. They put all their, their, their money and their chips into the Slice guy, whatever his name, Kimbo Slice. Right. And after yeah. he lost, the whole organization went under. All the, all the fighters were Just sitting on humbled. contracts, and they they didn't, they weren't getting fights because they had contracts. I don't I don't want that to happen. I got a family to feed. Yeah, absolutely. I remember they had some great fights on Elite XC before that. Remember, was that where uh, KJ Nunes got knocked out by Crazy Horse Bennett? <laughs> I don't I don't know. I, I watched a few of them. I watched her. Uh, what's her name? The chick fighter. <laughs> Not cyborg. Um, the hot one. Which was the hot one? Corano. Yeah. Oh, Corano. Yeah. Yeah. She fought. Uh, my, she fought my teammate Caitlin Young on that show. I only watched a couple shows. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So I wondered about that, but you know, obviously, if you go there, you're going to get your job done. So they're going to get to them to get their job done. And I'll tell you what, with what they've been doing, it looks to me like they got things back on course. Looks like they've uh, made a few new, new hires, and they got their ducks in a row. Obviously, they knew enough to sign you quickly. And I, I think that what stood out to me with your answer, too, is that Joe Silva pointed that out. That's pretty cool that, number one, they were keeping uh, keeping Bellator out of the conversation. Number two, he put you in a place where you can go be a superstar, man. You can be one Yeah, of that's the only good thing I got out. about the UFC. That's the only good thing I'm going to say about the UFC, though. You helped me out with that. Yeah, I'm sure of that. <laughs> sure I got nothing else good to say about those guys. You can say anything you want, though, because we. We're, and I we're, will. We're, we're you ask me the right question, I'll go off. <laughs> well, Jeremy. Jeremy. Well, let me just. It's yeah. your turn. Oh man. Um. Well. Okay. I, I wasn't gonna bring it up. Um. But you know, oh, yeah. obviously, um, you know, after your stint with the UFC, you know, they, they did cut you. Um. You know, they've been making a lot of cuts with a lot of fighters. Um, and a lot of guys, great talent, um, have been swept right out the door. Um, I don't know whether this is to put pressure on other fighters in the division or whether they're just trying to bring in new talent. But just what was the real reason? Well, then behind I, I don't know if they're trying to bring in new talent. They're just trying to take all the market away. They, they bought Strike Force. They, they, they merged Strike Force. They merged WC, but even though they already owned WC. But the Strike Force, man, what was the reason for that? The only reason I can think of right now is greed. They're just trying to take away all the market from the competition, and now they're they're dealing with the fighters, and they don't really care as much as the fighters is making money. As the bottom line, and then on the business side of it, I got you totally. Yeah. Well, look at the, the fighters is, that they're getting rid of, though. It's always someone that that they fucked with before, or somebody that they were pissed at once or twice. It's not necessarily because somebody loses or didn't do a good job. You know. Well, what was my reason then? I did those guys a lot of favors. I did a lot of things for those yahoos. I think I think it's because you keep it real, man, and a lot of people don't like the truth. <laughs> well, now I'm going to be a thorn in their side. The problem is I'm going to be in their femoral artery. Pull me out and sever it. To make them make go quick. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I mean, I, there were no other uh, – I mean, you got the number right away. You signed with World Series of Fighting. Um as far as I mean, obviously their their treatment of fighters. Um, something about that I wanted to ask about was fighter pay. You know, a lot of the guys that are starting out that maybe are on the undercard and the prelim cards. Um, I just wanted to get your thought on 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 the fighter pay for the guys that are fighting on the prelims, versus maybe somebody who is making their debut in the organization, but they're on the main card, um, getting paid more after maybe somebody like you who's been there doing the work you know, and putting in their, you know, making their bones. Um, is there something that you think could be done for the, the guys, you know, and the, the fighter pay for the, 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 
the fighters that have been there longer but still are just on the prelims? Well, I'll, I'll show you. I'll tell you what the pay is. The pay for a, a new guy, an up and coming guy that they're just signing is right around. It starts at two, two and two, or three and three, and they're bumping them up yep, after every fight. The same as UFC is. They go up, they go up two thousand if you win. So it'd be four and four if you win to the next fight. My fight is starting off at seven and seven. I'm coming down. I was at twenty two, twenty two with the UFC. So it is wow. kind of quite of a yeah. It's kind of a big pay cut. But right. I, I think the the reason I signed with them is because they told me they wanted me to fight June fourteenth right off the bat, right when I started talking to them. I was like, all right, you guys you guys set that up and I'll sign that contract. Was it a so they were pretty good at getting me a fight right away. That one. What was that? Was it a multi fight deal or was it just a one fight deal? No, it's a multi fight. It's a four fight contract. It starts at seven. It goes from seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. If I win consistently. So that it'll be back up within three years. It'll be back up to the same as the UFC. When I got well, cut. And we're, you know, honestly, with the fact that, you know, and you brought up a great point with the fact that the UFC is trying to buy up the competition, which ain't no secret. You know, we all know that. And that's kind of bullshit. It fucks the fans sometimes. But as far as that goes, when when you see that happen, fans see through that. And we want other organizations. We want yeah. people uh to come back and and fight again. Yeah. I, uh, well, I agree with you there. Well, and, well, hey, man, I'm sorry about that. I just got an update. Um, my 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 fiance Maria just came out because my my youngest son lives with his mom in Oklahoma, and I just found out that uh, for sure that they're okay. So thanks. Well, good man. Sorry about Glad to hear that. that. Well, yeah. right. Accident or something? No, well, that's tornado, tornado down in Oklahoma City. There. Medical related. What, what's that, man? I didn't hear what you said. Oh, there's big tornadoes ripping through there, and, and they're oh. not too far away from where my my youngest son lives with his mom down there, so I just got an update. That's scary. Yeah, well, man. Good to hear. I was freaked out. <clears throat> yeah, no doubt, man. Good to hear. Well, I just I, had a, I, uh, I got a few fan questions for you, Jake, if you, if you got, still got a little bit of time with us. I got plenty of time. I got all night long. Oh, right on, man. Cool. I just didn't didn't want to like suck up your whole night, man. Well, uh, let me uh, <laughs> let me scroll through them here, man. All right, here's one from Julius in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. He asks, uh, "What was your favorite move while wrestling at the U- University of Minnesota?" The double armbar. <laughs> yeah, I don't double know that one. Bar. Double armbar. Yeah, I got a lot of pins with double armbar. I had the most pins on uh, on the team <laughs> my senior year. Nice. Big ten. Big Ten, baby. Uh, we love Big, Big Ten. Big Ten, huh? Right. Hell yes. Man, I'll tell you what. All right, Will. Yep. I got another fan sure. question here. That keeps... Go ahead. Go ahead, yeah, I'm here. You got another question. I'm sitting here quiet. <laughs> oh, they keep coming in, man. I'm just trying to scroll through them all at once. Uh, let's see here. This well, one I comes from you. Bradley <laughs> in Spartansburg, South Carolina. He says, uh, Volkman, bro, I'm a huge fan. UFC is stupid. Do you think the fighters will ever strike until they start passing out millions to the fighters and stop fucking them? And, again, that was well, Bradley in Spartansburg, South Carolina. I, I sure hope the fighters, the, at least the UFC fighters, that they're going to have to start some kind of union. I don't know if they're going to go on strike. They're going to have to start some kind of union first. They're going to have to negotiate because there's no retirement. They, 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 uh, there's no retirement. Their health plan, their health plan sucks. It's a a catastrophic injury health plan, and not very many of the fighters use it. Um, there's no signing bonus. The, the pay is okay, but it, it really. My last year was my my biggest year. I made fifty four thousand, but I paid eight dollars or nine thousand in taxes. I ended up walking away with fifty or forty five thousand. So really, the pay is really not that great. So I, I sure hope something happens. I hope they start getting it together and. The, the fighters get together and form some kind of union so they can actually get some kind of a decent pay, at least, or health care. Once again, once again, that ties right into buying up the fucking competition, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they, they silence the fighters because John Fitch tried to bring up a union, after, but the problem is he did it after he lost to George St. Pierre after that title fight. Then he got canned right away. That's why, that's 
silent they silence short um John Fitch. I hope John Fitch gets back on the bandwagon. Yeah, you guys need that. You know, it's uh it's kind of interesting to hear a conservative talk about a union, though, bro. Yeah, I hate unions. I hate them with a passion, but they, like, in this in this <laughs> case, they're kind of a necessary evil. Hey, you're preaching to the choir. I live in Michigan. I got a love-hate relationship with the UAW, man. Believe me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I swear, every fight, every fight with the UFC, I was I was kind of fearful. Of, shit, am I, if I lose, I'm going to get cut. And obviously, this last one was the case, even though. Freaking a, a fluke, a fluke loss. I was going in the fight sick, and you could see it. Well, well, and you know well, you that, that's I'm, that's something I kind of wanted to ask. You know, I mean, when when you're going into those fights, you know, especially the last one, and then you just mentioned that you know you you were kind of fearful. Um, I mean, I mean, obviously that's a lot of added extra pressure. Um, did that play and having that in the back of your mind, it had to play into the play into it. I mean, does it affect your training camp? I mean, how, how, cause I mean, what I'm getting at is if guys feel that pressure and the UFC knows that they can, you know, utilize that pressure, um, to kind of, you know, maybe make things go a certain way. I mean, how much did it affect you? Who knows? That That's kind of like, uh, that's something you, you can't measure. Because it does, uh, the extra stress does have an effect on you. It brings down your immune system. I'm speaking like a doctor now. It brings down your immune system. You get sick easier. And I, I broke out with a cold sore just before the fight. So you know your immune system's down when you're, you get cold sores. I don't know if you guys ever get cold sores. Like no, I got cold sores here. and not herpes. <laughs> right. I, I, eat, I eat honey well, every and, day, man. Go ahead. Well, what I was going to mention is, you know, before, like, like Phil Davis, you know, before his last fight, he had some baby mama drama going on. Um, and, you know, he ended up winning that fight. But just that added pressure and stress um, from outside sources, you know, I, I know it's got to just really break you down. And then, you know, if the UFC and the powers that be know that, you know, I mean, it can kind of steer things a different way. But I just – I'm glad to see that, that you signed with the WSOF um, and – what I really like to see is now 20 years into this, the UFC, which was the 900 pound gorilla, um, even though they're trying to buy up that market share, um, there are other organizations out there where guys that are very talented can go and make a paycheck. And that's what I like about, you know, the world series of fighting in Bellator and, and MFC up in Canada. Uh, there, there are yeah, other things okay. uh, to make a paycheck. I hope it stays that way too. I hope they don't get bought out or, or uh, squeezed out at least by the UFC. Well, and then that that's, yeah, that's the problem in UFC is is the you know they're loaded, and that's that's a lot of yeah. money to go up against, man. Woo. Yeah. Well, you're only as good well, as good. your last event. You're only as good as your fighters. And right now, all the best fighters are there in some way, shape, or form. There's a lot of people though, bro. There's a lot of kids finding gyms just out of college. There's a lot of people that are finally. There's a lot of instructors all across the country. There's a whole new crop coming in, and they'll have the power to change things. And guys like you will have the power to influence that. Yeah. Just by being we are, uh, That's why that's it. Yeah, that's a statement. I, yeah, there was no question there, so I, I didn't really know what to say after that. Yeah, I'm, I, I just meant it to be a statement, bro. I'm just uh, just letting you know how much we uh, think of you, man. It's true. you got a lot of fans out there, no matter what the fuck anybody says or does. So that you just you just heard a bell, and that gives us uh, a two-minute warning. Uh lets me know that uh, i got a question for you, and then I'm going to turn it over to Perm to give out your contact info. And since we've right. had you on the show before... I'm just going to kind of say uh, at this point, if there's anything you'd like to say, uh, maybe just kind of let let our listeners know about, once again, the date of the fight, where they can watch it, and uh, what's going on with all that. And uh, also maybe if you want to give any shout-outs, good or bad. <laughs> well, first of all, let's start off with the World Series of Fighting. The event is World Series of Fighting 3. It's held in Las Vegas, Nevada. You can buy the tickets on Ticketmaster.com. Um, you can watch it on NBC Sports doc, or NBC Sports, the old verses, uh, basic cable. So it, it's pretty easy to watch it on there. I'm not really sure if I'm on main main card or not, but 
he told me I was going to be on the main card for sure next time, but I'm not really sure if I'm on the main card or not. And I know you can watch it online. I'm not I'm not positive where, but you can look under the World Series of Fighting dot com. It's just WSOF dot com. You can find out more information there. Cool. Awesome. Well, and uh, as far as uh, following along in your career, um, I know you got a you got Facebook pages and tweeters and Twitters and all that out there, right? Yep, yep. I'm getting rid of the old UFC, the Jacob Volkman UFC. I'm putting uh, Jacob Volkman MMA just so I can uh, hey, I saw that today get every I organization in there. A couple hours ago. <laughs> and then uh, I got Twitter is just Jacob Volkman, at Jacob Volkman. I got two ends in my last name. You can follow me on Twitter. If you if you if you message me at all, I'll usually follow you. Or if you're at me, I don't follow everybody that that follows me. I just tend to follow people I, that talk to me. Sure. Makes it easier that way. Boy, your feed gets jammed up. <laughs> I don't fuck with Twitter. Well, listen. <laughs> yeah, I do occasionally, but not a whole lot, man. It's it's, it's kind of a nightmare for me. But uh, yeah, it makes me it makes me feel like I'm some kind of little high school kid playing with on the on the Twitter, just tweeting every little <laughs> thing you do. I hate tweeting everything yeah. I do. <laughs> That's it. We, we we usually tweet the show link, you know, a day or two before time to get it out there. Um, yeah. Direct it to certain people, and then that's about it. That's about it. <laughs> Maybe some YouTube links. I show that. that. <laughs> yep, I get to handle all that fun stuff. Well, listen, Doctor Christmas. As always. It's hey, my new nickname is uh, Feel Good. By the way, my new nickname is Feel Good. Oh, I oh, changed I'm it. Right. Yeah, Doctor Jacob Feel Good Bokeman. Wait. You hear me? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna walk out to Motley Crue. Yeah, Motley nice. Crue. Oh, I wish I'd have known that beforehand. I'd have had it playing. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Tell well, you listen. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to have some nickname from uh, I like the girls, girls, girls song from Motley Crue because that, that's a pretty good intro song too. But I'm gonna stick with Doctor Feelgood. That's, that's awesome, man. Hey, well, listen, for me, uh, my co-host, Dave the Butcher Clifford, and my producer, the network, Chris Maltzberger. I, I, Jacob, I just want to say thanks for joining the show again tonight, man. We wish you best of luck in June, and uh, we're looking forward to having you on afterwards and talking about that victory. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Hey, you're quite welcome, man. You take care and have a great night, sir. You too. Bye. All righty. Bye-bye.